I just really hit the record button and then we just roll. We just uh, let the magic happen, right? We let the we let the magic hit the board. So, ladies and gen- well, why am I doing this like it's a live feed? What I don't know. Think? You know what's funny, Mario, is What's that it? we just got done doing a live stream, right? Everybody knows we we record one day a week and release it. Like we're not shy about that. That's no. what we do. No, 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 no. I am two cups of coffee deep, and it is like quarter after ten o'clock. And when you get near the age of forty, two cups of coffee hit you way different than they do at the age of twenty six. Which means you're gonna go to sleep later. <laughs> <laughs> like 4 a.m. later yeah yeah oh yeah yeah i i'm the yeah. same way i can't touch anything that has any kind of caffeine after like seven o'clock i'm done <laughs> You know what else keeps me up at night? Thinking about draft history. Love talking about draft history. Oh, God. But I think there's a very big art. People talk about Bean being a soothsayer in the draft. So let's do this, Mark. You and me, let's go back and forth. Let's go through 2019 and 2020, Okay. right? Let's go first, second, third round. And let's look at three players ahead of who the Bills drafted and three players behind. Let's go three up and three down, right? Oh. Let's look at who is on the board around that time because we all know that if you need to move up two, three spots, you can it's it. easy to move up two, three spots. Yeah. yeah. It's easy to move up two, three spots. So let's look at the players that were on the board right before the Bills were drafted, our Bills drafted, and then the three players right behind. And let's see, did Bill, did Buffalo really get the best value at their pick in 2019 and 2020 in those early rounds? It's a very dangerous game you're playing, Mr. Bond. <laughs> a very terrible impression there, Mario. <laughs> that is no, but the, the 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 point still remains. That's a fascinating exercise because yeah, we do we almost say it as gospel. Oh, Bean's good at drafting, and it's, well, let's let's take a look. Let's see right. what's going to happen. So, all right, we'll we'll start with the 2020 draft. We're going to start mm-hmm. in the obviously. If we look at the 2020 draft, um. So no first round pick for Buffalo. So what we're saying Those is, well, no, no, wait. I just want to, just want to, because people will say the Buffalo Bills traded the first round pick for Stephon Diggs. So if we were to just, to, just to give everyone a glimpse of the game that we're playing, oh. it was the twenty second pick. So nineteen was Dam- Damon Arnett, twentieth was Clayvon Chason, and then Jalen Regeer was twenty one, and then after mm-hmm. it was Kenneth Murray, Kenneth Murray, Caesar Ruiz, and Brandon mm-hmm. Ayuk. I, and don't forget Justin Jefferson at the 22nd. Pick. Yeah, Justin Jefferson was what they right. gave up. So, right. I mean, Jefferson, 88 catches for 1,400 yards, seven touchdowns mm-hmm. is nothing to, to shake a stick at. But right. I believe the Bills made out with that pick. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah. That's how we're going to examine this. So now we yeah. go to the second round, which is a little bit more. And I just saw Kyle Duggar was drafted at 37. <laughs> that's okay. I know. I know. Um, okay, so we go down. <laughs> So AJ Epinesa was taken in the second round with the 54th right. pick. So we're going to examine the three picks above that, three picks below it. So, Paul, right. what are the three picks above where uh, AJ Epinesa was picked? All right, so that would have been Trayvon Diggs, uh, Cam Akers, and Jalen Hurts. Those three picks above Epinesa. Mm, okay, so then the three after that were Baltimore took J.K. Dobbins, Miami mm-hmm. took Raekwon Davis, and the Rams took Van Jefferson, another wide receiver. Um, right. obviously we were, you know, we, we use uh, pro football reference for these uh, statistics. So if you guys want to yeah. follow along with us to have, have some fun, the statistics are there as well. So Jalen hurts who you think taking one pick before up is going to be the starter more than likely. And in, in, in right. Which of- obviously wasn't the design. No, it wasn't. Uh, no, no. <laughs> that wasn't the plan no, in Philadelphia. That was not at all. And then you no. got cam Akers. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, okay. I really like Cam Akers a I lot. I love Cam Akers. I really like Cam Akers I, I did, a lot. I did the noise because of, I'm comparing, as we read them, I'm comparing them up and as a. And right. you got yeah. uh, yeah. Trevon Diggs, brother mm-hmm. of Stefan Diggs, I, you know, oddly right. enough. Yep. Uh, what I'd like, to, I'd love to have him on this team right now, Trevon Diggs, at this point. I, I agree. I Diggs and Akers both, I'd be like, well, that solves a lot of problems for you. Yeah, and then if, right? if, if the Bills didn't have Allen, Hurts is – Heck of a player. He's a heck of an athlete. So, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, obviously the quarterback position is more valued. So then we look after we look J.K. Dobbins, Raekwon Davis, and Van Jefferson. Van Jefferson right. only catching nineteen passes. Yeah, uh, you get lost in the mix as, as a wide receiver and for the Rams, that just happens. Okay, right. Um, especially when Tyler Higby's taking all your targets. 
<laughs> Raekwon Davis, defensive tackle. Bills really didn't have a need for a mm-hmm. defensive tackle. They signed two in the offseason. So I guess do we are we looking at need at the time too? Yeah. Or? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Absolutely. And then you you come into J.K. Dobbins. That's that's right. that's that could be a polarizing name for just being picked right after AJ Epineza. Yeah. So yeah. does absolutely. Dobbins make more of an impact than Epineza on this team in twenty twenty? I mean, you already have Singletary, right? Yes. So you start looking at the comparisons and is like, is J.K. Dobbins a more dynamic running back than Singletary? Yes. The answer to that is yes. Is Cam Akers a more dynamic running back than Devin Singletary? Also, the answer to that is also yes. Yes. Right. So the Epineza pick kind of felt like we know we need to get younger at this position, but we know that the well only gets drier from here. Right. Like we got it. You got to take a swing at those defensive ends early. That's that's what you have to do. You got to take swings at defensive ends early because the bills have. I don't I don't want to speak negatively of like Daryl Johnson. Right. But the fact still remains that like the bills have dumpster dive for defensive ends. They have previously. And, you know, I like Daryl Johnson a lot, but Daryl Johnson's not a starter in the NFL. Like yeah, not a starter at I mean, this could at be. this time. Could be. Seems like he has the raw time. materials. Seems like he right. has the raw materials, but, but not at this time. Yeah. But you draft up Epineza because you feel like he could be a starter for you. But Cam Akers and J.K. Dobbins are really tough to pass up, and, and even Diggs. Like, would we be looking at a, a CB two position battle if we had Diggs on the team? I'm thinking probably not. No, you wouldn't. No, I don't think right. you would. I think he comes in and he starts right right away for you. Even though right. he pl- played uh, played twelve games, had forty nine tackles. Um, it's interesting enough too to think of it this way. I think the Bills, not only do you have to get in and get your defensive ends early, but you're looking at an ex- expiring contract for Trent, Mur- Trent Murphy, who had one year left on his deal. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, in his 30s, um, Hughes. You know, uh, Hughes. And then you yeah. just signed Addison at that point, too. Right. So you're sitting right. there going, we're not <laughs> we're not young in this room at all. No. And just, just to your point, Johnson's not, not a starter yet. So, okay, we got to get there. But is that – need triumphing talent exactly yeah. right okay. i think that's i think that's the argument here with this pick and yeah. i'm gonna say that the acres or dobbins feel like they would have been a better pick than the epinesa pick oh i believe but it would have definitely been it would have definitely yeah been. i the, just think from an impact standpoint they would have made a bigger impact on the bills imagine jk dobbins or cam acres you know taking snaps instead of tj yeldon in, in the afc championship game Right. Like Ooh. what did Epinesa give you that Dobbins or Akers didn't? Right. I, I don't I don't know. I don't, like, know, I don't know. That's tough because, you know, you scroll up, you look at Chase Young is really the only really big, huge name I could see. I knew that Buffalo Bills were uh, were big on gross Matos. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. I just remember that. But they, he got taken, you know, mm-hmm. pretty early. Right. But it's it's interesting too because then you see AJ Dillon taken just right after that. So, mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> evidently Green Bay thought, "Whoa, all these running backs are flying off the board. We got to get right. Got to get something. Got to get. So, got to get our guy. Right. It was so interesting well, to see that. Well, and I think that kind of leans to the next point, right? When you drafted Epineza, did you draft Epineza because you like was drafting a running back in the third round really the plan here? Right. We could probably move on to Moss because Moss would have been the next pickup on the board. And, yeah. you know, it, I, you take a look at it, right? After you drafted Epineza, there was one, two, three, four running backs drafted before Zach Moss. So yep. in between the Epineza and Moss pick, there were four running backs taken. Yes. That's that's quite the number. So right? you're talking about the Epineza pick. Then mm-hmm. you had Dobbins, mm-hmm. A.J. Dillon. Mm-hmm. Antonio Gibson. Yep. And then uh Kashawn Vaughn, who only had five ca- uh, five receptions, yeah. twenty six carries. So but but Antonio Gibson. Mm-hmm. Right. Does he make now we're not examining him? Gibson in this scenario, but no, no, I no, want to like the fact he was that he's there. Drafted- <laughs> right. You drafted Epinesa out of need. Re- realistically, let's just call call what it is. You drafted Epinesa out of need. Yeah, didn't they say they don't draft the, for need, though? Teams don't draft for need? I, the- yeah, I know, man. That's what we – and again, like we talk about it like the Bills don't, right? The argument yeah. could have been made that Epinesa was the best player on the board at the time. Could have been. I guess, right? I guess. Yeah. Um, but then you get down to the third round and you look at Moss, and let's just take a look at the three players ahead of 
ahead okay, and behind I'll, Moss. I'll take this one. You got Lloyd Cushenberry, sure. who's the center for Denver. You got Terrell Lewis for the Rams, who was a linebacker, and you got Julian mm-hmm. Blackman, uh, Indianapolis safety. Okay, right. So yep. uh, Lloyd Cushenberry starting all sixteen games. Is, yep. Is, but you just signed Morris to a deal you that signed, you yeah. couldn't. Yeah, you weren't. You none of those players are on the board for you. No, no, no. Right. No. So then afterward, who do they end up, who end up going after Moss? So afterwards, New England drafted Anthony Jennings. Uh, Cleveland drafted Jordan Elliott, and uh, Minnesota drafted Cameron Danzler. Okay. I again, I, it was a linebacker, a defensive names. tackle, and a corner. Yeah. You know, given the space that it's in, could you make the argument that Moss had a bigger impact on his team than all those other players? I mean, Cushenberry probably had the biggest impact, but probably, centers yeah. probably off the board for you there. Um, I mean, I I like Zach Moss. I I do right. I do I do like for what they're trying to do offensively, at least philosophically speaking, what they're trying to mm-hmm. do offensively. Right. Um. We talked about it on an episode really, really previously that said, "Listen, you can put Moss and Singletary really in any offense, and they'll probably yeah. benefit in a different type of system than an EP system. Mm-hmm. And they might, yeah. who knows? Right. But if you bring in another coordinator, which you may do in another year, I know we're getting down the line. Th- having those guys does not hurt your team. Right. Okay. Yep. They're they're not breakaway right. runners, but mm-hmm. they're not going to hurt your team being on it." Right. But we go back and we take a look at those two picks combined, right? You drafted Epinesa and you drafted Moss. One not one realistically out of need. The other one was best play- that I think Moss is truly an example of best player available. You look at the Could board, be. you're like, Yeah. Probably best player available. Because you look five, ten, fifteen picks after that. There's no really yeah, huge name that jumps out at you. Yeah, there's some nice players there, but I mean I think you made out all right there, right? So had the Bills drafted Dobbins instead of Epinesa, right? Yeah. What do you what do you do? I mean, that third round pick looks kind of lost at this point, given the players that were drafted around Moss. I mean, there's I mean I think that one worked out for Buffalo, right? Yeah. But so if, if you take you're saying if you take Dobbins, what happens? I don't think he falls to you because well, let's take a let's take a look at it. After after the pick, after the mm-hmm. pick was made for um, AJ Epineza, yep, there was only one team that took a defensive end, mm-hmm. and that was Detroit. Julian yep. Okara, Okwara, Okwara, mm-hmm. but only one. Yep. So you probably oh, no 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 there was I'm sorry there was another one um, oh, Jabari Zuninga. Oh, J- Jabari went to the Jets, so I mean, yeah, the, to Jets the Jets are Jets are a mess, but Jets are a type of team that that, J- that drafted <laughs> Jakai Polite. In the third round, and cut him in camp. Sure did. So like, sure I, did. I, I was. I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> they may not have gotten Epineza. Is what I'm saying. Is <laughs> but there's there's two there's two things to examine here, Paul. Yeah. One, does this team have a different perspective? Let's say they end up getting Epineza in the third round. Mm-hmm. Okay, you get J.K. Dobbins and Epineza. Or, how about this? And I will credit you on this. What if you traded? Would you would you trade Zach Moss and AJ Epineza for Diggs? And I'm talking about the corner Diggs. Trayvon oh, Trayvon Diggs. Diggs? Tra- would you well, trade I'm, both of those picks to get Diggs? I think, and just to frame that out a little bit, right? When yeah, you start yeah. talking about moving up the draft board, you got to include other picks, right? Absolutely. We mentioned, yeah. yeah, we mentioned before that if you want to move up the draft board. Sometimes it's the next pick. Right. Yes. And given the talent that was in that second round, there's a lot of talent in that second round. There is. Yeah. It probably does cost you a third round pick. Yes. Like you look at the de- the talent difference between the second round and the third round. It's pretty, st- I mean, there's a clear line in the sand, you know, as to where yes. the talent really dries up. So do you trade Epineza and Moss for Diggs as your CB2? Which means is that would you trade your second and your third round to move up three spots to get Diggs? It, it's, I mean, Diggs solves a problem for you. He, at CB2. Oh, he does. Solves a problem for you. It's dead. I CB2. mean, you obviously would have played Trent Murphy more on the last year of his deal, which would have been yep. fine. But now, as you go into the 2021 draft, you're looking for a defensive end. I think the difference here is how much different do I feel about the defense with Epinesa on versus Epinesa off? I feel no different. That's the thing about me, too. I, I know yeah. he's a solid kid and a solid player. Yeah. However, I don't get moved by him being, oh, Epinesa's in the game. Sweet. You know yeah. I mean? I, oh, I totally agree. 
Totally agree. Uh, I, I think he's a nice, uh, you know, he's a nice sub package player for you. But did you get the best value out of that second round pick? Uh, I'd argue probably not. Yeah, you know, we could be eating our words next year, Paul. That's fine. I'm, Maybe. I'm, I'm willing to do that. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'm willing to, you know, as they say, trust the process. But as of right now, uh, I would I would trade both of those picks for a CB2 right now. Definitely yep. CB2. Mm-hmm. Would would Diggs be the CB2? I don't know. Going to a team with his brother, I think he would be he'd be comfortable here. Yeah, so we'll I see. agree with that. I agree with that. Hmm. All right, so let's back it up to 2019 then. All right. right. 